Hi, this is a short training video on changing sales tax rates in QuickBooks. We have other videos on sales tax in QuickBooks that are more in-depth and comprehensive than this one. But this is a short one that we have created in order to show how to quickly uh, change sales tax rates in QuickBooks. April 1st, 2009, State of California sales tax is going up by one percentage point. And so we knew that QuickBooks users would need some instruction on how to accomplish that task so that QuickBooks would create um, invoices and, and other sales transactions with the correct amount of sales tax. So there's really two ways of doing that. One of them I prefer over the other. I want to explain both of them to you and the drawbacks of both, and you can make your own decision. But, uh, like I say, I will point out the one that I really think is the better choice. So one way to do that and this is the one I don't like as well. If I go to the item list, and I look all the way down at the bottom of my list of items, here are my sales tax items. Now in this sample file for Rock Castle Construction, I have um, made inactive the other sales tax items so that we would just see the one when we uh, looked at this video so that we're going to widen that column a little bit so you can get a look at that. So here's my one sales tax item. It's for Kings County and the rate you see over here is seven and a quarter percent. So this is the one that I'm using currently. Now what's going to happen on April the first, then that rate's going to go to eight and a quarter, isn't it? Seven and a quarter plus one, obviously, eight and a quarter. So I need a way to charge the right amount of sales tax after that date. Well the one way to do that would be to right click edit the item, and then just change the rate right here, and then click OK. And that's easy enough to do. The danger in that approach is that if I go back to an invoice or a sales receipt or some other type of sales transaction prior to the April 1st date, and I make a change in that document, there's a good chance that QuickBooks will recalculate the invoice, and since the sales tax is now different, it will charge the new sales tax rate even though that might be a March or February invoice. So I may want to be able to go back and add more description or something to a prior invoice. And there would be a real danger when I did that or somebody in my company, if they were doing that, of accidentally then resaving that invoice with the wrong total. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take the other approach. The other approach is just to create a new sales tax item. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to right click my mouse. I'm going to pick new off the little pop-up menu. I'm going to create a new item. First thing I do is select the type of item I want to create, that sales tax item. And I'm going to call this Kings County so sales tax. Sales tax, there we go. And I'm going to add an 09 to that. So I already have a sales tax item called Kings County Sales Tax, so I'm going to distinguish this as the new one. And the description can be the same. So I will describe it as Kings County Sales Tax. Now the rate. Well, the new rate is eight and a quarter, isn't it? So I'll put that in. The tax agency will be the State Board of Equalization. It's going to be that on all of my sales tax items. And I'm going to click OK. So now I have my new item at eight and a quarter. Now, if I had set this up several days before the actual rate change, I would go ahead and leave them both as active so that the um, seven and a quarter rate could still be used up until April the 1st. And I would just want to be real careful that everyone was using the correct uh, sales tax item. Once I reach April the 1st, I don't want to use this seven and a quarter percent item anymore. So I'm going to come back to this list. I'm going to right click on the old item and I'm going to make that item inactive. So there we go. It's off the list. This is the procedure that I prefer for changing the rate. Now I won't have that, um, that problem of my invoices and sales receipts recalculating. Now I do have a little bit um, of an additional issue with this. It's going to be a little bit of a headache for a while until I work through all my customers. Not difficult, but I want to point out so that you know this is coming when uh, 
you know, the first time you see this in QuickBooks, you'll realize you know, it's supposed to happen and, and how to deal with it. So if I come to create a new invoice after April the 1st, and I pick for my customer, Christy Abercrombie, I'm going to get this message that says, you know what? Kings County sales tax is the sales tax item associated with Christy Abercrombie, and that's now inactive. So QuickBooks is going to give me two choices. I can use it once. In other words, it's going to go ahead and use it, even though it's inactive, or I can make it active. Well, I sure don't want to make it inactive, or I'm sorry, I don't want to make it active. I made it inactive so people wouldn't use it. So I don't want to choose that option. So I'm going to choose use it once. Even though I really don't want to do that, that's the only other option I have. So I'm going to select that. I'm not going to use any estimates here. And then I'm going to come down here and you see I've got the old rate. I will change that to the new rate. So you're just going to have to be careful and know that um, you're going to have this issue for the first little bit as you work through your customers to get them on the new rate. So you know, I want to complete this and show you what's going to happen here. So I create an invoice here at the new rate for 1624 for Christy Abercrombie. When I go to save this, I'm going to get another message. And it says, you know what, you have changed the sales tax item for Christy Abercrombie. Uh, do you want to change it permanently? Do you want to change the customer file? I'm going to say, yes, I do. So I, when I say yes, then QuickBooks changes that in her customer file. And next time I create an invoice for Christy Abercrombie, I'm not going to get any of those messages because now the new sales tax item is associated with that particular customer. So I just go into the customer file, additional info, and as we look here, you see it's the new one that we just created, the Kings County Sales Tax 09 item. Now if that's too much of a headache for you, the other option, and I probably should have left Customer Center open, the other option is to go through your customers one at a time and change the tax item. You can do that. If you have a really long customer list, you probably wouldn't want to, but you may have a short customer list, and that may be a feasible alternative for you, in which case um, that would work fine, and then you wouldn't get those messages when you create invoices. So I wish I had a way to show you um, a, a way to avoid that uh, message and that awkward way of updating your customers, but you are going to have to update customers one way or another. Even though it's a little awkward, I still feel that it's better than risking someone going back and changing a description on an invoice and ending up with an incorrect uh, invoice amount for a customer. So you can make your own choice. Uh, the other option may work for you, but this would be the preferred method. I hope you found this um, helpful. I hope it helps you with the uh, sales tax increase that we have coming up. And uh, if you um, are interested, we certainly have other training videos for QuickBooks on our website. I hope you'll avail yourself of those for uh, the answers to other questions about QuickBooks that you may have. Thanks.